It's funny when you think about this, WWE Battleground 2017 has almost the exact same time length as Survivor Series last year. You know, the so-called four-hour show. America is a joke. Two years after that gimmick died down, Rusev is still trashing the USA. Only difference is the country he's representing. And what do you know, it ends the same way too. Round. Just like I wondered last year, I wonder yet again this year, what does a static effect have to do with a battleground? The power of Budios compels you! Previously on WWE. Also, I still call bullshit on that rap battle because the clear winners were the Usos, only reason New Day won was via disqualification. No one cares what's trending. Now into a cover, scrambles for the cover! So is Jey Uso scrambling for the cover after he's already pinning Xavier? I don't see the sense in that. And now Jimmy- OH MAN! Jimmy Uso is a dick to the middle turnbuckle. Two weeks! Two weeks? Until what? Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh. Why is everybody except Randy Orton allowed to do a punt kick? It's bullshit! His, his teammates with the rest of the news. My eyes continue to roll every pay-per-view with every unnecessary 10 chant during the countouts. You know what this means, right? 10 sin penalty gets activated. Whatever it takes! Whatever it takes! Wait a minute! Attacked. Oh, oh. First off, Jey Uso was already exited in the ring before Xavier Woods made the jump off the top rope. But also, Xavier has no peripheral vision and could have easily seen Jimmy prepare to give him a super kick and thus strategize for it. But I will also remove a sin for this moment either way, considering that was fun to watch. No. No is still alive. Ah, Jay fell over while running to the referee. This is awesome. Jimmy thinks he's broken Matt Hardy with a delete taunt. Cover! Look at this right here. I give New Day's victory a sin considering Jimmy's shoulder was off the mat during the final pinfall. Many fans are complaining about the font that shows Shinsuke Nakamura's name on the Tron. Complaining about a freaking font. Just be thankful he doesn't have that unnecessary pyrotechnic sound effect anymore and carry on. Shinsuke rolling his eyes at Baron Corbin's early match trash talk and really matches my reaction to it too. See? Even Shinsuke would rather fight. Say come get some. Do I have to remind you all the time that Shinsuke is saying come on, not come get some? Come get some is John Cena's catchphrase, not Shinsuke's. Hey. Shut up! With the many times that Baron is telling the referee to shut up, I am surprised that I actually decided to not have a bonus round at the end of this video. Those are tweets. Oh, and Baron's hair is taking quite the punishment in this match, don't you agree? With WWE's rock star. Since when the hell has Shinsuke Nakamura been referred to as WWE's rock star? They seem so determined to call him anything but the King of Strong Style. Also, calling Shinsuke WWE's rock star makes no sense considering he doesn't have a musician like gimmick. Yeah, we are watching a oh, physical right matchup. That literally makes no sense, JBL. We are witnessing a physical matchup. Isn't literally every match we've ever seen a physical match? Anything involving bodily contact is physical. So how is this any different from the thousands of wrestling matches we've seen over the years? Here comes Corbin! Look at that. Ah, Shinsuke ended up kicking Baron in the head anyway, despite the clothesline and the 1080 degree spin. Honestly, Shinsuke could have pinned Baron and won the match right there, considering Baron doesn't move for the next near minute of this match. Oh well. Oh, 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 man. oh, oh man. What a shame. This match was just getting good, too. Baron just had to ruin everything with a random low blow. Uh, Corbin, oh! And even Baron's post-match assault doesn't help his case. It honestly hasn't escalated this feud, to be honest. It took WWE quite a number of months of noticing that Naomi's women's title looked completely invisible during her entrance before they finally realized, hey, we should make that title glow in the dark, too, so that we can actually see it during her entrance. She is the only woman in this match to be a former women's champion. I can tell that Tom is referring to the SmackDown Women's Championship, but when he says it like that, it seems like he believes Becky Lynch is the only woman in this match to be a women's champion at all. In other words, completely disregarding Charlotte, who won it four times. Next time, be more specific with what you say, man. How do you not need a defibrillator after that dance? Jack Google, it's not really for older folks. And that is why Naomi is awesome. She completely owned JBL there. Also, did she seriously just say Jay Bizzle? What is wrong with society these days that makes them add an izzle after something? Doesn't make you cool, but it does give you a sin. Not now, Hulu. There's five beautiful women in the ring about to wrestle. You can keep popping up all you want. I still don't give a shit about you during WWE pay-per-views. It's all about hashtag elimination match. From your view. From my view, it's all about hashtag watch the match and stop tweeting. Here's how it works. The last woman standing will earn a title opportunity. No, that's the reward for the ending of this match. That's not how the match itself goes, which, by the way, we don't need reminding of because we ain't dumb. Charlotte's wanted Lana for a while now. 
And I don't blame her either. Wink. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look at Tamir. Oh, come on. WWE really is trying to make Lana more like Eva Marie by botching her kicks. Either that or Lana is highly skilled with the force. Since Natalia is mainly facing her side and hasn't fully locked in the sharpshooter, how has Charlotte not gotten out of this already? I'm at Lana! Oh! Seriously? Why would Lana break up a possible elimination and thus hurt her chances of actually winning this match? That was very poor strategy on her part. Charlotte. No. Four, five, six. Lana debates for 10 seconds before going to pin Becky, and yet she was the one complaining about a near fall earlier. Plus, it's also an elimination match, so it's not like anyone's gonna break up the pinfall. And Tamina, no, Tamina has been eliminated! Because we don't know that when you tap out, it qualifies as a submission, which also qualifies as an elimination. The ring announcer should honestly change his name to Captain Obvious. See you later, alligator! Wrestlers get eliminated quickly, one by one, upon a long match with no eliminations cliche. Natalia! Shoulders down, Natalia! Well, it's about freaking time that Natalia got the opportunity to battle for the women's championship. Remove a couple sins. Champion attempts to shake hands with future challenger who ultimately leaves the champion hanging cliche. If AJ Styles was going to win the United States Championship at a WWE house show instead of the scheduled title match at Battleground, then what was the freaking point of that number one contender's Battle Royal where the winner faces Kevin Owens at Battleground instead of a non-televised house show? I mean, that was the worst and most embarrassing day of his life. Kevin believes losing the US title was the worst day of his life. Hey, be thankful that it was at a house show where the only people who saw it happen were the fans in attendance that night. Oh, is that the embarrassing part? Then it seems like Kevin would rather lose his title in front of the world instead of a simple crowd. He put Chris Jericho out of commission for good. For good? That's some major bullshit. Apparently Tom believes that if someone gets taken out for a while, they're taken out for good. Kevin walking around the ring really stalls the first three minutes of this match. This is seriously turning into the three to four minutes stalling of time that he applied to Goldberg back at Fastlane. <laughs> Kevin actually believed that he could connect a punch to AJ when he was clearly on the other side of the ring with AJ looking directly at him. AJ would have to be stupid to fall for a second-rate amateur trick like that. It's Ric Flair's held it the most times, oh. six. Oh, so WWE finally admits that Ric Flair is a six-time United States Champion, despite them saying all these years that he was actually a five-time US Champion, with one of his title reigns not even being recognized for some stupid reason. Goes to show that WWE are assholes to a legend's title reigns. Look at the face of Kevin Owens. I know, right? It looks like he's constipated. I'm here, trying to get it. Yes, you heard right. Tom just referred to Kevin Owens as an it rather than a him. Was it by accident, or is he actually trying to hype up the new remake of Stephen King's novel? Shoulders here is Styles. Kale's sitting down on him. Really? Kevin was sitting on AJ, and that's why AJ couldn't lift him up? How the hell was Kevin sitting on AJ when he was clearly standing up? You guys are really not making a lot of sense in this match. <laughs> See, that's why I wouldn't try moves that require that sort of strength and cooperation, because then I would end up dropping my opponent and rarely connecting the move at all in a hilarious fashion. Again here. What? Kevin is such a dick to the referee. Also, referee knocked down a crucial point in match cliche. Also, also, Byron's high-pitched what? So, the covering! How AJ didn't hear the referee counting and simply move his arm to the left is beyond me. This was honestly one of the most awkward finishes to a US title match that I've ever seen. Doesn't look like the finish was botched to me, as AJ's shoulders were actually down. Besides, if that was not the planned ending and AJ was supposed to win, his music would be geared and ready to go instead of Kevin's playing immediately. Tonight we will not have the honor of standing next to you. Instead, we're gonna stand right under you since we'll be under the ring for the first bit of your match. Sound good? We're coming up next, Kevin Owens. What? Kevin Owens just had a match for the United States Championship, and now you're saying that he's competing in another matchup next? So he's replacing John Cena in the flag match against Rusev? I just might have to give this a double sin for the horrible botch. After an inspired return. Tell me, how was John Cena's return on the 4th of July inspiring in any way? Especially since everyone knew about it for literally two months when WWE hyped it up. What is so inspiring about a two month hype to a return that so far has meant absolutely nothing? United States, a beautiful country that was built on an idea. History classes and my ancestors would disagree with that statement, but let's move on. Anyone could come to this land. And then Donald Trump got elected and went against that very statement. I am not a part-timer. Until I decide to leave again. In this match, there are no pitfalls. 
Whoa, 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 stop right there. What the hell is a point fall? How does one win a match by point fall? 72 seconds of waiting for John's music to hit. I hate it when WWE does that all the time. John Cena's whole career could be lost if he loses this match. How? Just because he loses a match for his country? There are so many people who have lost matches involving their countries and yet their careers continue to shine. That's honestly one of the dumbest things I've ever heard from Byron Saxton. Oh, and look at uh, it. Since this match is basically the capture the flag game, I think it'd be honestly hilarious if John also ran to grab his own flag just like Rusev did. Then it'd be a race to the finish line. Sure, that wouldn't last long, but it'd be an entertaining start to this match if you think about it. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. From the top! Rusev, yes. John, no. Well, there's a lot of bitterness in Rusev. Oh, really? Rusev has bitterness? What tipped you off about that? <laughs> moment seemingly and now going up to the top turn rusev easily climbs the first two ropes but then decides to take all the time of the freaking world just to make it to the top rope i bet it'll take rusev about half an hour before he actually manages to retrieve his flag laugh at my truck sign why would i be laughing at a truck for any reason get for the american flag i must grab rusev's tits wait a minute oh winner of battleground 2017 to bring you summerslam 2008 up the entrance way to the finish line but first, he's going to pose on the top rope with the flag as though he won the match, and thus giving John more time to get back up, grab his own flag, and ruin Rusev's imaginary celebration. American flag! Oh! Ow, my hand! You know what definitely would work to Rusev's advantage right here? What if he grabbed the American flag and put it on the floor outside the ring? That way, even John would have to go around the ring just to retrieve his own flag like Rusev is doing right now. No rules against grabbing the opponent's flag here. Not like he can get disqualified or anything. Why does the path to the American podium have the stripes of the American flag, but the path to the Bulgarian podium is completely blank? You mean to tell me that WWE was too lazy to add the Bulgarian colors to make it more effective? Or is WWE just being a dick to other countries that aren't American? As usual. Oh, watch out! Remember, oh! John really pisses me off whenever he no sells shots to the face from the stairs. It's one thing to have your hands cover your face, but John puts his hands like three feet away from his face. Or does shots to your hands literally knock you out? I'm so fucking confused here. More. This is what the Bulgarian flag looks like. Just making sure you know that despite all the other times I've posed with it instead of winning this match. Where the flag? It's where you left it at ringside, dumbass. Rusev wonders where his flag is, but when he's told where it's located, he decides to grab a table in a place where his flag is nowhere to be found. Well, this completely spoils that John is going to win the match because Rusev coincidentally set up the tables right beside the American podium and in typical WWE standards, all non-Americans fall at the feet of the American flag. Especially if the guy doing it is John Cena. Rusev is grabbed oh, man. Ow! By gently putting the flag stand under my back like a decoration, you just gave my back severe pain. The physics of this is really scary. I know that these segments involving Brizanko are actually catching on and are hilarious, but this event went into overtime and this could be one of the reasons. Oh my god, who assaulted these two? Better wait another month or maybe more to find out the answer. What a ripoff for this so-called finale. Previously on WWE. Admit it, Mike Kanellis' outfit is just a parody of Billy Gunn's outfit when he was known as Mr. Ass, with the lips and everything. Also, my fans told me to give Maria and Mike time to shine in order to show their potential. Let's see, they've only made a few appearances, Mike's only wrestled twice counting this match, Maria hasn't wrestled since her return, and then they disappear for the next month for some reason. What the hell am I supposed to be impressed with? They have a video from her honeymoon or what? JBL was a perfer, wanted to know if Maria and Mike had a video on their honeymoon. We know what you're thinking, John. From this couple's standards, kiss under the mistletoe and flirt above a fallen victim. This romance is scary as it is boring. Who are you, John? A lover. But no longer a fighter because he'd last only 21 seconds at WrestleMania all over again. Hey, look at that! I found Waldo! No wonder he hasn't been appearing in his books. He's been attending WWE events this whole time. Oh, Sam oh, Kanellis over the top hard! Who the fuck is Sam Kanellis? The long lost brother of Maria? Maria's husband better watch out! He's got a name, you know. You don't always have to refer to Mike as Maria's husband. That sign to the left is upside down, and the sign right next to it is mirrored as a way of avoiding copyright on its own design. This music is a freaking win. It's epic to hear that when the Punjabi prison is coming down. This structure dwarfs Hell in a Cell. How? It's roughly the same size as the Hell in a Cell structure. And this is a bamboo cage, whereas the cell is a 100% steel structure. Ah, your scarf fell down before you could reveal your face from under it. 
Jeez, I know that you're the modern day Maharaja, but what the hell pissed you off just now? Jinder Mahal is literally trembling with rage. Court advantage, this is his match. Despite the fact that he's never competed in it before. And again, these four doors are the inner The referee rings the bell to start this match without considering the fact that one of the four doors are open, which gives Randy Orton an unfair advantage to slide underneath and be out of the first structure just like that. Shut the door before you ring the freaking bell! 60 seconds, I'm gonna be close. Jinder yells for a door to open, which is fine, except for this. The referee was nowhere near that door, so why not call for the door that the referee is actually close by to open? Oh, look at, look at Jinder, Drinder. Who is this Jinder Drinder that you speak of? Or are you just playing the rhyming game? This match, the official. Rather than continue going after Jinder, Randy decides to simply observe the referee locking the door. There. For the door, and again the- the 60 second countdown literally waits 10 seconds after the door originally opens before beginning. That's against the rules. No door is supposed to be open for 70 seconds. The hall and the door. By now, we all know that these two wrestlers will either not make it through any of the doors at all, or one of them will succeed, whereas the other will fail by the time we get to door number four. Now Randy Orton. Whoever that fan was that said, let's go Cena in a match where John Cena isn't even present. That fan is obviously drunk out of his mind. Get there! Oh, he's got a clear path! Let's take 15 seconds, Randy! Be sure to take the remaining 10 seconds to get out of the inner structure, Randy, even after you were quickly headed to the ropes. 47 seconds of these two having a staring contest, 11 minutes into this 27-minute match. Jinder grabbing Randy's ass. That's to do so! I think Orton wants to put the finishing- The door is freaking open! Don't waste your time trying to go for the RKO. You're only three feet away from the door. Get out while you still can! To the door! Randy's shoulder is hurt! How the fuck did the Singh brothers get under the ring without being noticed? Also, by now, we should always expect this sort of shit. Even in a match like the Punjabi Prison, officials should really bring back the check under the ring for possible intruders before match begins rule. In the six seconds between the door closing and the referee locking it, Randy could have easily just lifted up the door and gotten through instead of just sitting there feeling hopeless. Start! The gender just got DDT, he's not climbing out of anywhere! Byron, while understandable that it's difficult to see through the bamboo structure, it's clear that Jinder got RKO'd before the Scene Brothers showed up, not DDT'd. It's all about the WWE Championship! Shut up, we already know that. Yeah, the Singh Brothers are trying to hand this victory to Jinder Mahal! While I agree it's an unfair advantage, the reality is that the Scene Brothers are doing nothing illegal since there are no rules in this match. And besides, it may have escaped your notice, but sadly, life isn't fair, Byron. Ah. No disqualification here! That's like the seventh or eighth time that you've reminded us that this match has no disqualifications, as if we didn't hear you the first six times. Randy is a 15-year veteran in WWE, and yet he still falls for the begging for mercy to distract you trick, which is one of the most cliché tricks in professional wrestling. The arm here against Jinder Mahal! Man, if only Samir Singh was a participant in this match, he would have easily won by this epic strategy, since he's small enough to fit through the cage itself. Samir Singh! Oh! Jinder was watching Randy attack Sunil Singh about 15 seconds before Jinder himself was attacked and thus could have countered at any moment. How did he not see that? The fuck was Randy doing with the referee there? For Randy Come Orton on. to retain the WWE Championship! For Randy to retain the WWE Championship? I don't know if you know this, JBL, but Jinder Mahal has been WWE Champion the past two months. Oh That's a in this entire structure! Well, yeah, I'm definitely removing three sins for the return of the Great Khali. However, I'm wondering why Kali was entering the arena using Jinder's music instead of his original theme back when he first debuted. The stage graphics were also Jinder's. While effective, Kali does realize that shaking the cage could cause Randy to actually fall up to the outside of the structure and thus cause him to win the match, right? Also, since when has the great Kali ever been friendly with Jinder Mahal? Jinder even referred to Kali as his hero too, which completely disregards their feud back in 2011. Ah, there it is. By ripping away the WWE Championship from Jinder and raising it above his own head, Kali semi-remembers the torture that Jinder put him through years ago. But still, that ain't your title, man.